Welcome back everyone, and if you're new here, this is a channel where I go over the main companies that I'm interested in and that I'm investing in in the stock market. Where I keep you up to date with what I think are the most important things to know with them. And I can also see that 83% of you who watch my content aren't even subscribed either. So if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Something I've also noticed too is that people that subscribe to my content are Sigma male gigachads, and the ones that don't tend to be broke loser dorks. Boo, you stink! And if you think I'm being hyperbole, I'm not. I don't make the rules. These are facts. Backed up with clinical research data. So in today's video, I'd like to go over two separate updates with Humble that were released on February 10th. So I'll start with the first update, and lastly, I'll be finishing with one of the more important things to know, whether you're a shareholder in Humble, or are maybe considering buying some shares of this company right now, as it concerns Humble's debt and how this company will be moving forward. Alright, so onto the first update. Humble launches mobile wallet with digital assets, search engine, and social media functionality in one application. Alright, so in this announcement, Humble stated that they have delivered the first mobile wallet to offer digital services, a search engine, and verified social media profiles all wrapped up into one single application. And currently, Humble Wallet is now approved and available on the Apple App Store in over 140 different countries. And like I mentioned, with Humble building out their wallet into what they're calling a super app, this will enable customers to perform a variety of functions with financial technology, search engine utilization, social media, and of course mobile payments, all within one application. And of course, Humble's going to continue to add features to the digital wallet that'll fit with their customer needs. So basically, they're just going to continue to support their app and hopefully keep a pulse on their customers' wants, desires, and complaints alike so that they can optimize what's working for them and trash what isn't. Alright, so if we look at the Humble Wallet, currently it provides its customers with the ability to buy, sell, and hold digital assets. Nothing new here. Their search engine, which is currently the homepage of Humble.com, provides traditional web, news, images, and videos. However, what makes this search engine different, and its ability to be labeled as a Web3 engine, is that it also provides blockchain-based search results for verified NFTs across Ethereum, Polygon, Blocks, and more. And furthermore, Humble also offers one of the first social media platforms in the world with independently verified user profiles and brands. Now, I'm not saying that their search engine and social media platforms will be able to compete with the likes of Google or Twitter per se, but you have to realize that a lot of these Web3 technologies are still in their infancy right now, and I think it would be naive to think Google or Twitter aren't already brainstorming ways to use Web3 capabilities in the future with their current technologies. I know the idea of Web3 hasn't fully become mainstream yet, but I think when it does, you can bet that larger companies are going to capitalize on it. But with that said, I think it's pretty cool to look at companies like Humble, who are honestly kind of at the forefront of releasing these kinds of technologies to the public and iterating on them. The Humble Wallet allows global customers to quickly search, verify, and transact with each other in new ways in the digital economy. As consumers move from Web 2 onto Web 3 via Humble, we believe that digital wallets, as well as verified people and products, will start to become a fundamental expectation of future customers. Fake profiles, ratings, reviews, and merchandise are multi-billion dollar market problems in Web 2, as are fake bot accounts and ad click fraud. The Humble platform is being built to help solve for these issues on Web3 using blockchain and other new technology solutions such as KYC, KYB profile verification, and decentralized blockchain registries for faster payments, goods, and services authentication. Brian Foote, CEO of Humble the Humble Wallet will move next on the product roadmap to accepting small and mid-sized business merchant payments. 
And of course, I'm sure a lot of people know by this point, the Humble Wallet and Humble Social Media are currently also available on the Google Play Store as separate applications, but will soon be merged together into a single product soon. So to me, it seems like Brian Foote and his team are really doing a lot of consolidation with Humble in order to simplify the user experience and trim the fat, which actually leads me into the important bit that I want to discuss. Humble reduces company debt by over $10.8 million, announces strategic move to simplify operations and focus on core technology through subsidiary spin-off of Takiri. So by this point, I'm sure a lot of people know that Humble acquired a company called Takiri in the past, but now is severing ties with them. Which is why Humble announced the spin-off of Takiri in a strategic move to focus resources exclusively on developing and releasing Humble's own core technologies and customer funnel. You see, spinning off this subsidiary allows Humble to tailor their own capital allocation strategies, reduce their cash burn, and make more company-specific investment decisions, which is ultimately going to help drive more long-term growth and value. In an agreement executed with Takiri founders on January 31st, 2023, the parties mutually released all liabilities and the Takiri assets were transferred back to its founders, cancelling all related promissory notes. So what this means is, this will strengthen Humble's balance sheet by significantly reducing the company's debt by $10.8 million and also enhancing shareholder equity. And although this subsidiary provided some contributions to Humble, the whole Takiri deal ultimately didn't result in any bottom line profits, which means that Takiri was actually increasing day-to-day -day operation expenses for Humble. So by divesting from this subsidiary, this is going to help to reduce operating losses each fiscal quarter for Humble. And now, they'll hopefully be able to focus on their core Web3 technologies that should also help to reduce any overhead that they have. With this strategic move, we are focusing our capital and time on our own Web3 platform and reducing our burn rate. The move allows Humble to further own its customer journey from start to finish across the Humble digital wallet, search engine, advertising, social media, ticketing, merchandise, and digital collectibles. This decisive split is an integral step towards our goals of driving organic sales revenues, reducing debt, and uplisting to a major national exchange. So I think the main takeaways here are that Humble is finally getting around to consolidating a lot of their technology and cutting things out that aren't working. And honestly, I think this should do a lot of good for the company. You see, there's nothing wrong with taking some risks as a smaller company. And I'm sure as you know, Humble has been trying out a lot of different things in hopes that some of their tactics will stick. So, with Humble deciding to cut ties with Takiri, this really isn't a bad thing, as this frees up a bunch of cash and time for them. And on top of that, Humble already has their own built-in ticket purchasing app, so it's not exactly like Humble is losing out here. And I also think it's important to remember that since Humble first started their company, their ultimate goal was to create a super app that had all their Web3 features under one umbrella. So I think overall, these updates are a really good sign from Humble and tell me that they're sticking to their plan and steadily making progress. So yeah, I honestly want to hear your guys' thoughts on Humble, how you see them as a company, and where you think they could be moving in the future. And with that, I'd like to wrap up the video here. Thanks as always, and I'll catch you next time.